Um, I'd like to now turn to Pablo Soto. Bravo. Uh, Madrid City Council member, as I mentioned earlier, in charge of citizen participation, transparency, and open government. In 2015, grassroots movements in Madrid created radical political change of city leadership with the election of Mayor Manuela Carmena and city council members such as yourself devoted to real democracy now. How has the city of Madrid delivered on their promise to engage people power and what role can subnational governments play in building the trust of citizens? Pablo. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Thank you very much, Manish. Thank you for, for the opportunity to have a, a, a councillor of a city like Madrid to be able to come here to the United Nations headquarters to speak with such a, a big number of interesting people and tell something very important that we come to tell you. Well, the first thing I wanted to clarify is that if people don't trust governments, they're, they're right. They are right not to trust the government. <laughs> well, if you ask anybody in the street who has the power, he's going to say probably the government. So the deal is that as long as the governments keep the power from themselves, people is right not trusting them. Now, to understand what happened in, in uh, 2015 uh, in Spain, I need to go back a little bit to 2011, the 15th of May, 2011. Uh, something happened in Spain, unexpectedly, a demonstration in 50 cities at the same time. It was a demonstration that was not baked by uh, political parties, traditional political parties, or workers' union, or traditional associations. And the slogan was, real democracy now. And suddenly, hundreds of thousands of people all over the, the, all over the country took the streets and said, we are the people, and we want a real democracy. It's not about what party are you into it? We need to solve all the problems and the solution to all the problems is democracy. That was something that really changed the feeling in Spain. And four years later, nobody in the big old traditional parties had listened. So there was these uh, local elections in the more than 80 cities and villages in Spain and people created new parties on every city and they won the election. They won in Madrid. The one in Barcelona, we won probably all of the big cities uh, and many tiny uh, villages as well. And what we uh, did was, well, what we were asking for in the streets, uh, we were thinking, okay, real democracy, what is that? Well, the thing is that if people take the decisions, they have the power. If government takes the decision, people don't have the power. People will only have the power one day every four years. So we gave people uh, power. And people in Madrid is taking the decisions directly. People in Madrid decided to uh, remove traffic lanes from the main, like the Broadway of Madrid, Gran Vía, yeah. so people could walk over there. Uh, the, the, the building is, is going to start like in two months. Uh, they decided to uh, spend 160 million euros in more than 500 projects all over the city, changing all the city, all the city, creating, for example, uh, houses for uh, women victims of violence, uh, or creating daycare uh, spaces and centers for Alzheimer patients, or creating help for buying books for families that probably have kids and don't have the money to buy books. Uh, they uh, decided how the, the city is created from now. But how did, did we do it? Well, we uh, used several different mechanisms, some of which I'm sure you all know. You'll know that what's the participatory budget, right? It's a part of the budget that directly the people decides. We use a, another different also, which is very powerful, which is the, we call it the people's proposals. Basically, when somebody makes a proposal, if he's able to gather the support, the signature of 1%, just 1% of the people in Madrid will vote the proposal. But not the politicians, the people will vote. And if the people agree with that proposal from that citizen, the government will have to obey. Um, we created a platform 
because we thought, okay, everybody's using social networks, everybody's using the internet. I myself was a software developer for 15 years, so why not doing it on the internet so people doesn't need uh, papers to gather the signatures in the streets? So created, we created Design Madrid, and uh, oh my God, people used it. Uh, 330,000 Madrilenians use it. I, I, I think that only Facebook is, uh, has more users uh, from Madrid, and uh, people is taking the decisions with Design Madrid all the time. Every new law that we approve gets debated and decided there. Uh, people's initiatives, uh, participative budgets every uh, year, but we also decided to make it open source. Because when we were talking about trust, we thought, well, people probably won't need to trust if they see what it is actually going on inside the machines. And what happened? several things. The first one is that they trusted it, but the second one is that hundreds of volunteers started reading the code and submitting improvements. And the third thing that happened was that more and more cities took the code. The first one was Barcelona. They call it this Decidim Barcelona. But now more than 50 cities all over the world use this technology that they also build with us uh, I think that five uh, subnational governments from the OGP, so the OGP for us was a great opportunity, Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is doing a great job uh, with uh, participatory budget using what they call Buenos Aires uh, Elige, which is the same tool and we co-build, which is the site Madrid. So thank you for the opportunity to tell you, and it was so important for us to tell this year because maybe, maybe, just maybe, there's some country wanting to join in because people is taking decisions all over the world. They are starting to take their cities to make the decisions directly, their proposals. Maybe one country is the next step. So want to join in? <laughs> Thank you.